Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to show you the five melodic minor scale patterns and how to practice them. I'll introduce the theory of the melodic minor scale, including a couple famous music examples that use it. Then I'll show you diagrams of all five melodic minor scale guitar patterns so you can practice the melodic minor scale and play it all over the guitar neck. This lesson is connected to a series where I teach a bunch of different scale types and show you all five positions of those scale types all over the guitar. If you're interested in any other scale types and how to practice them, then check out the link in the description. There'll be a playlist to all the videos in this series. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard on the guitar and really practicing how music works in a hands-on practical way so we can gain more control over music and express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome and please subscribe and hit the bell. The melodic minor scale is the bottom half of the minor scale and the top half of the major scale. That's one way to think of it. The spelling is simply, you can think of it in several ways, it's like a major scale with a flat three. So one, two, flat three, and the rest is the major scale. Four, five, six, seven, one. The other way to think of it is, okay, it's a natural minor scale, if you know that well, which we should, and the six and seven are raised. So one, two, flat three, four, five, raised six, raised seven, one. Okay, now here is the catch about the melodic minor scale, and that is that traditionally it is ascending in this way that we just talked about where the six and seven is raised and the flat three is there. But descending, going down, it's just a natural minor scale. So on the way down, you have to lower that seven and lower that six. Now, again, this is the traditional way. This is how kind of functional uh, har harmonic music, classical music uh, traditionally uses it. Now, since it's been used in other ways, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, but we want to know it this way. One, two, flat three, four, five, raise that six, raise that seven, one, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one. One. This is a this is called the melodic minor scale for a reason. Its purpose is for melody, and the melody is actually raising those notes depending on the direction it's going, or lowering those notes depending on the direction it's going. So if you're going up, you're kind of reaching up and playing those higher notes, natural six, natural seven. If you're descending down, you're lowering those notes to create momentum. It creates voice leading. It creates a half step movement in places kind of towards where you're going to. So again, I'll play that so we can hear it. So very interesting. So that's the theory of it, the spelling of it, and then how it functions ascending and descending. But still that can be like, well, how is that used in real music. A couple famous examples of the melodic minor scale being used where it is actually functioning in that ascending way and then descending as natural minor. One of them is the Bach Beret, one of the most well-known um, classical guitar repertoire pieces, which is from a Bach lute suite. So that's a solo guitar piece. When you add the bass, it sounds like this. Of course, you'll almost never hear that on an electric guitar, but that's how the piece goes. So let's break that down. We have one, two, flat three, two, one, major seven, which is actually borrowing from the harmonic minor scale for a second. Don't worry about that. Uh, one, two, five. Here's melodic minor. Natural six, natural seven, one, flat seven, flat six, five. So that's the spot right there. Six, seven, one, flat seven, flat six, five. And all the rest of that is just uh, part of any uh, minor scale. So that's a cool thing to play with. Five, six, seven, one, flat seven, flat six, five. Even just to do that as a little exercise. Five, six, seven, one, flat seven, flat six, five. It sounds fine. It's actually using all of these chromatic notes, but in such a way where it creates this kind of voice leading momentum. The other piece that you'll recognize that uses this is... Yesterday by the Beatles. Let's break that down. This is kind of a 2-1 on G. And we go to the 3 of G, and now it's going 5, 
raised six, raised seven, one of E minor. Five, six, seven, one, two, flat, three, two, one. Okay, so that really is the same thing we did here. If you play it here, five, six, seven, one, two, flat, three, two, one. But now it comes down flat seven, flat six, five, right after that. So. Right, so it's using that, and the, the chords and the harmony are, are moving around within that, and we're thinking of it as kind of um, the melodic minor scale off of E, but it very much is an example of how the melodic minor scale is used. Both those examples are great ones to be aware of. So now that you understand the theory of it, how it's used in a couple of famous pieces, the structure, you can play it along one string, we're starting to understand that business about it being ascending and different uh, when it's descending. Let's go ahead and look at how modern musicians and guitar players often study the melodic minor scale for improvised music, and that is to just play statically the ascending version. So you're actually gonna play descending the same thing that we played ascending. So we can call this the static version of the melodic minor scale, um, or the modern version, or something like that. Um, but if you just say melodic minor scale, a lot of people just think of it as this. So here are the five uh, scale forms to use. Let's just say you're wanting to really work on this scale. I would work on knowing these five scale forms, these five positions, these five um, scale shapes, and I want you to play them with what I call the root to root method or the root to root exercise. If you've watched any of my other scale videos, I talk about this every time. It is so crucial for really centering ourselves on what a scale is actually doing, what it actually sounds like. We need to start on the lowest root, pause and repeat any root in the scale form because we're playing in positions, and not repeat or pause on any other notes, um, and always end back on the root again. So then we really get the sound of the scale, we see where the roots are, we hear them clearly. It just maps out the, the scale forms in this kind of position playing way on the guitar better than anything else um, I've ever encountered. So I'm gonna go ahead and just demonstrate that with these five scale forms, and that's something that uh, you should be able to do. You can then just move those scale forms around and play them in any key, but I'm just doing it in C at first, and you have the scale forms up on the screen that you can use for yourself if you like. So here's that demonstration. I'm gonna go a little quick with it, but you know what I'm doing, right? So for yourself, practice it nice and slow. I might speed up and slow down a little bit so you can hear it in different ways. Okay, so that was the first form on the screen there. Always starting on the root, ending on the root, pausing on the root, or you don't have to pause, but definitely, but you have to repeat the root. Okay, two more. Okay, one last one. So that's how I want you to practice really every scale. That's why I did this scale series of all these different videos that map out the five scale forms of many, many types of scales and demonstrating practicing with that root to root method. If you're working on any scale and you wanna get it down and you already can play it kind of up and down or you do the root to root thing, the next thing I always recommend doing is using melodic patterns. And one of the first ones I recommend is just uh, skipping up a note. This is melodic thirds and then coming down one note. Skip up, come down, skip up, come down. So this is melodic thirds. You're going up a third off, off of the one, up a third off of the two, etc. So it sounds like this. I always recommend playing around with that. I have a free PDF that you can download that shows the top three melodic patterns for improvising with the pentatonic scale. So if you want like just a nice clear exercise sheet to put in front of you, you can download that PDF for free. There's a link in the description for that. Um, that really helps when, when we're practicing scales and we wanna improvise it often just sounds like a scale when we go to, to improvise. So we need to break up the notes in that way. So uh, those patterns 
can apply to really any scale, but the pentatonic one is a fun one to play around with. So that's why I made that sheet. If you liked this lesson, please hit that like button. That really helps the channel out and it helps other people find the information that they're looking for so they can keep working on guitar stuff and hit those guitar goals. Uh, next week's lesson, I do a video every Tuesday. Next week's gonna be fun. I'm gonna talk about more about improvising and scale forms. Um, and I'm gonna use the song Money by Pink Floyd. And we're gonna talk about how to work on a riff and learn it really thoroughly and deeply and play it in multiple places on the guitar and really understand it. So stay tuned for that video. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Happy practicing.